target's about 50 yards away, huh? Yeah, it is. I'm about to spin it right down the middle. Oh! Bang! Give me my million! Now, take notes. <laughs> no way. You gotta be kidding me, man. What are you guys doing on the roof? We're just practicing. Well, get off before you break your neck. It's for a million dollars. Get off! The Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge is back. Enter at EckridgeFootball.com for your chance to win. You know she'd want that money. Welcome in, along with Eric Eager. I'm Steve Palazzolo, and today it's all about the PFF Top 25, brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoked sausage of the college football playoff. Eric, you're the man behind all the numbers here at PFF, and for the first year, we're really putting all of your expertise and the PFF grades and numbers to figure out a top 25 that is completely automated. And you know what goes into our top 25, and how does it potentially differ from the other rankings you're going to see? Yeah, so we you know grade every player on every play of every game, and this is the fifth season that we're doing so. And and I believe now that we have substantial you know ability to take those numbers and create some sort of you know, opponent adjusted, schedule adjusted, conference adjusted ranking uh, for all the teams that, as you said, is automated and it's based, you know, completely on the work of you guys as analysts uh, of football. Yeah, so it's great. So this is our way of saying here are the top teams, not necessarily saying, okay, they're going to make it to the playoff based off of beating this team or that team. It's just who are the best teams. And usually at the end, it, it should shake out pretty well. So let's get into our preseason. This is at our preseason top 25 here at PFF. Our first batch of five, 21 through 25. Eric, what stands out in this group here? I think the strength of the Big Ten, right? So we have three teams in this uh, group of five, and, and Michigan State's actually a team I think the, the, you know, the regular power rankings are very high on. We have them kind of on the outside looking in, but if you think about you know, between 20 and 30, we have at least you know, four Big Ten teams. That's a pretty uh, you know, high mark for that, for that conference. That's a loaded conference this year in the Big Ten. I'm seeing some really good defenses in here. Michigan strong at all levels defensively. Mississippi State, one of the better defensive lines in the country. And then I look at Iowa. I think they might be a sneaky team with, I like quarterback Nathan Stanley. They have Anthony Nelson on the defensive line who made the PFF top 50. So you can check that out as well. Uh, there are some interesting teams here that I think can make a move. Let's get into the next group here. It's numbers 16 through 20. And the first thing I see here, Eric, are some teams that have some quarterback questions. TCU, Oklahoma State, South Florida, all breaking in new quarterbacks this year. And we know that how, how important the quarterback position is. But how are those teams ranked here, knowing that there's a big question mark at the most important position on the field? Yeah, so we do, you know, take the, you know, take the ratings and, and put them down if a quarterback's changing from one season to the next. It's not as much as for the NFL, for example, but it is, it does matter. H however, you know, we've noticed that the grades on a season-to-season -season basis are pretty stable. So these teams graded very well in either offensively or defensively or both a season ago. And so even though we do think there will be some regression, we are still going to rate them favorably. Uh, two teams that don't have quarterback issues, though, Brett Rippon at Boise State and then Ryan Finley, who used to be at Boise State, sitting there at 19. Finley heads into the season as one of the best signal callers in the entire country. Let's get into the next chunk here. We're at 11 through 15. We have LSU, Stanford, Notre Dame, and UCF yeah. at 14. Miami at 15. There are a lot of interesting schools here. I, I think a lot of people expected Miami to be a little bit higher. Yeah. And then UCF at 14 coming off their undefeated season. What goes in to their ranking? Yeah, so Miami a little lower because of their quarterback play. I think, you know, we weight that very, very heavily. And they Turnovers were, regressing a little bit this year, too? Yeah, let, yeah that, that, that's also we, we grade process, not ne necessarily result. And I think for UCF, what's really interesting is, you know, as, as we sort of try to ground truth this rating system, undefeated a season ago, graded really well, but since their competition wasn't quite as good, we had them finishing last year at 10. They're 14 now because of a new coach, uh, but Mackenzie Milton, I think, has the opportunity to uh, keep this team kind of in that range uh, throughout the season this year. Absolutely love Mackenzie Milton. We do think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. I'd keep an eye on Stanford, too. I think K.J. Costello is yes. probably the best quarterback they've had in quite a while. Let's get into our top 10 now. Here we go. It's 6 through 10. I see a week one matchup on there, Washington and Auburn. We talked about quarterback questions in the last group. Ohio State's breaking in Dwayne Haskins. USC has just announced true freshman JT Daniels will be their starter. 
So there are some question marks at quarterback, but these are some really strong teams. Yeah, I think with USC, they were just so strong a year ago that even after we regressed them via losing Darnold, they're still in the top 10. What's really interesting here is that you know Ohio State would be a top five team, I think, if there wasn't the uncertainty with the head coach and how they're going to handle the three-game suspension and all those things. So, so that factors in, our coach, coaching rankings and who's actually leading the ship. Yeah, and if a coach leaves, and so the, the issue with, with him is that he left for a little bit, came back. So if, if we have that uncertainty there, it does hurt their them in the rankings. Yeah, I think we're going to have that great week one matchup between Washington and Auburn. Washington loaded in the secondary. Jake Browning's had a few good years of production. Yes. High expectations for uh, Jarrett Stidham at quarterback at Auburn as well. And then Penn State, Trace McSorley's graded really well for us as well. And they've got some uh, really good defensive talent. And despite losing Saquon Barkley on the offense, they should be able to handle that, I think. Yeah, and another Big Ten team kind of uh, showing really well here. All right, let's get to the top five, and we've got Oklahoma at five, Wisconsin, another Big Ten team there at four, Clemson at three, Georgia at two, Alabama at number one. How close is it at the top when you're running all the numbers between these teams here? You know, I think Alabama is head and shoulders above, you know, numerically the, the other five teams, but once you get past that, you know, two through four are, are you know, a good or bad game away from flipping, even if those teams happen to win. Uh, you know, so it, the distinction between two and four isn't isn't very good. You know, for example, Wisconsin with a you know a couple good showings in a row could jump to two in our rating system. And I think they have the opportunity to do that with an awesome offensive line, the best running back probably in college football, and a quarterback that our grades are more favorable to than I think the public opinion is. Yeah, Alex Honeybrook always seems to do well. He he had a great grade on third down last year, and I know that's one of those things that we say. Look, if you make those third down and longs, and you can convert that's very important uh, when you look at Oklahoma breaking in Kyler Murray who's also a baseball player uh, but they still have a, a plenty of supporting uh, talent around him Clemson maybe the best defensive line in all of college football but still questions at their quarterback position as yeah. well but man they've done such a good job of reloading and then when I look at Georgia's roster and we'll have a whole Georgia video for you guys previewing their season Georgia is loaded when it comes to just pure depth all across their roster and Jake Fromm at quarterback even though he's being challenged by true freshman Justin Fields Fromm was excellent last year as a true freshman yeah and you know and the same thing Alabama has their own you know quarterback issues at the top right. and honestly if, if they were if they had more certainty there I think that their rating would be higher even uh, higher than it, than it is currently yeah I mean because uncertainty at the quarterback position you don't want that if you're especially if you're an elite team you just don't want uncertainty anywhere um, and so even though we have Alabama one there, you know, I think it, once that sort of shakes out and you sort of know uh, what's going on there, I think it'll be even higher, especially if they win their first few games convincingly. Yeah, so there you have it. It's our PFF Top 25. It's all powered by the PFF grades, and uh, it's a unique way of looking at things. These, this is the top, top teams in the entire country. That'll wrap it up. It's all been brought to you by Eckridge. Don't forget to pick up Eckridge Smoked Sausage at your local grocery store for this weekend's tailgate or home gate. And make sure to visit EckridgeFootball.com for great game day recipes and to enter their season-long million-dollar challenge.